How's it going everybody? This is Be The Bush. This is the FNI RSI oscilloscope, signal generator, and also transistor tester all in one. They call it the DSOTC4. The scope part of this is not as easy to use as a traditional oscilloscope with all the buttons and knobs built in. But in a pinch, it will work for signals less than 10 megahertz. I would consider the functionality of this scope more on a hobbyist level. If you do not have any measurement tool at all and you just want one compact thing that includes everything, this might be the way to go. First and foremost, I think this device is most useful as a transistor tester. If you have a whole bunch of little components somewhere, you get it all mixed up. Sometimes you want to be able to bin these components and see which one has a better gain. Maybe you want to match the input capacitance. Then you can just plug it into this, measure a big lot of it and then sort of match them up. That's one way to use it. Another way would be to put some components that you have no idea what they are. I don't even have to read the part numbers on it. I can just plug it in. No need to look up data sheets or anything. And then you can see the gain. You can see the input capacitance. You can see the forward voltage drop. So this makes it easier to identify, especially if you're scavenging parts from other electronics. If you have a bunch of different components you wanna test, you plug it into this little slot over here. You see how it says 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 2, KAA, 1, 2, 3, 3. Well, all the ones are connected together. All the twos connected together, threes connected together. There's only one K and the two A's are connected together. So when you plug in a transistor, you just plug it into whichever three pins that are different, lock it in place, press auto, and it will test it. Takes a few moments. It says is an NE MOS. The threshold voltage is 3.9 volts. The gate is identified as pin one. The drain is pin two and the source is pin three. There's a gate capacitance of 219 picofarads. That's resistance from drain to source when it's on is 1.9 ohms and other metrics that you may be interested in. Let's try other components here like this SCR. I'm gonna plug it into one, two, three again. Push auto. It's identified it as an SCR and it also identifies the pins, the anode cathode and the gate. So you can go ahead and use this device. And we can also connect a resistor from pin one to let's say pin two over here and select auto. And it's measured that it's a resistor. It's one one with the zero number of zero. So it's 11 ohms at 5%. It says it's 10.9 ohms. So it's within the tolerance. Here's a capacitor. Let's connect it to one and two. And wow, look, it even does capacitance, which is kind of cool. It also does inductance as well. It's measured 9.26 microfarads. There's a V loss of 0.8%, ESR of 1.94 ohms. If you look at the marking on here, it does say 10 microfarad, but the tolerance on this is plus minus 20%. So it can go as low as eight microfarads. So this is indeed within tolerance. Let's try another transistor. This is an NE MOS again. It's a smaller one than the first one we tested. Again, some component information here, the pinout information. Let's do another one. This is an NPN, I believe. I'm not even reading the part number here. So if you have a hard time reading it, so you can just go ahead and check out the specs with this machine. A current gain of 350 and a VBE of 622 millivolts. It says it's an Audion, audio N type probably, NPN transistor. Unfortunately, it doesn't give you any frequency information in terms of how high a frequency it can withstand. Let me put a diode in here, one to two, auto. And it does sense that it's a diode. It goes from one to two, so it's reversed from how I plugged it in. The four voltage of 645 millivolts, reverse leakage of eight nanoamps, a capacitance of 11 picofarad. So let me flip this around just to see if it can detect it the other way. Press it again. Now this corresponds to how I plugged it in. So forward bias, the current will go from pin two to pin one. Reverse leakage of 1050 nanoamps and 11 picofarads. Now we can plug a Zener diode in. It's recognizing this as just a diode, not a Zener diode. So if you expect it to be a Zener diode, you gotta use a different mode. I can change the mode over here, push the power button to get to oscilloscope, signal source, toolbox over here. And then we can go down to Zener mode, plug your Zener diode into the KA position. It requires the marking, the line to be on the K side 
and the no marking side on the Anno side. And this is indeed an 18 volt Zener diode and it reads 17.24. Typically what you use Zener diodes for is you forward bias it a little bit and you use that voltage as a reference for something else. Let's go on off test. For the voltage, you gotta use in zero to 40, meaning it can withstand up to 40 volts, but no negative voltage. If I connect this, it shows that it's 1.4 volts. You have a 10th of a volt resolution. There are other modes that I cannot test, which is a three pin temperature sensor tester. And then the DHT11, this is a temperature and humidity sensor. You're supposed to insert it into pin one, two, and four. Now let's try the infrared decoding. Let me do the power. User code 02A0. Data code 807F. Now I'm gonna push the input button. It's gonna change something. Notice the user code stays the same as 02A0. And then the data changes. So for this whole remote, the user code is always gonna stay the same. I'm gonna press another button, the mute button. It changes again. Another button, another button, another button, another button. So using this sensor, you can decode what this thing is saying. And let's say if you have an Arduino, you can spit this back out and emulate this remote control. There's a function generator that comes out of this DDS port. There's 13 different kinds of signals and each of them can go up to 50 kilohertz. It comes in this wire here and it has alligator clips at the end. If I say, okay, I want sine wave and frequency. I want 50 kilohertz. I'm gonna change it to oscilloscope now and connect it to the oscilloscope input. And what you see here is a test frequency of one kilohertz. So it actually does not hold its output at 50 kilohertz once you change it to the oscilloscope mode. So I'm gonna go change it to, let's say the square wave mode, right? I'm gonna go to oscilloscope, but the type of waveform will actually stay the same. So we see a square wave now, triangle wave, triangle wave, half wave, full wave, step wave, reverse step wave, index up, index decrease, direct current, multi-audio, sync pulse, Lorenz wave, and that's all you get. The only thing I need to mention is the multi-audio. You can only set the major frequency, which is from here to here. The other audio tone is gonna be five times 50 kilohertz. So you have a 50 kilohertz tone and a 250 kilohertz tone, two different kinds of tones in one. For the amplitude, you can only change it to a 10th of a volt. The highest it goes is three volts. If you go down one, it's 2.9, and you can go all the way down to 0.1 volts. I have the sync pulse pulled up here. It's at 50 kilohertz. I moved to two vertical bars here. We have a period of 20 microseconds, and that corresponds to 50 kilohertz. I'll change the amplitude to two volts one volt and we see that it does change. And I'll change the frequency down to 40 kilohertz, 30, 20, 10. This is one Hertz. So this is pretty cool that it can even do one Hertz. Well, the Delta is actually 394 milliseconds. It's a bit off there. Here it is set at one kilohertz. However, I'm measuring a period of 872 microseconds. It's a little bit faster than what it says here. And I also notice a little bit of artifact on these little steps here because it's generating that waveform. Let's zoom in to look at what's going on. Here we see it changes the voltage every 10 microseconds. There's a little step there. So there's a little bit of DAC conversion artifact right here. Interesting though, when I changed it to 50 kilohertz, you do not see the artifact as much. So now let's go to oscilloscope mode. I've connected the output to the scope input and notice that it's a little bit jittery so I can just press auto to see if it can auto calibrate. It's having a little bit of hard time so I'm gonna manually do this. The up down changes the vertical voltage division. The left right changes the division. You can change the parameters of the sensing by pressing and holding mode. Here we can change the coupling the probe 1x or 10x, the mode of triggering, is it a single shot, is it auto, or the edge, is it the rising edge or falling edge? There's a WF and then there's a parameter. Let's say we want V maximum. We wanna see that. Okay, come back out. And here we have another parameter shown at the bottom, which is the 1.51 volts. If I want to DC couple it, DC couple, 
One thing's for sure though, you don't have dedicated buttons to change the trigger point or to move the signal left and right. When it says V and H, you can control the vertical and horizontal. So change the vertical division, the horizontal division. And then if you click OK, you can change the mode of all these buttons. When the little green arrow points down, you can change the vertical position of the signal. So you can move it up and down and left and right. And then if you click it again, where the down arrow and the left arrow is on up there, you can change the trigger point, trigger kind of over here. So effectively it moves a signal, but this is slightly different than moving the signal itself on the screen because you can change the trigger point. Move the trigger point up. It triggers at 720 millivolts. And then you press OK again, it changes back to the first mode again. You can press stop and it'll freeze the frame. If you guys are interested in this product, check out my affiliate link down in the video description below. Thanks for watching this video. Until next time.